Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will discuss about Z transform with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of Z transform. After that, I will discuss about properties of Z transform. After that, I will derive relation of Z transform with discrete time Fourier transform. After that, I will derive equation of inverse Z transform. And at last, I will explain applications of Z transform. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of Z transform. One should know Z transform that is a powerful tool to analyze discrete time signals and discrete time systems. So as if you want to analyze discrete time signals and discrete time systems, then one can use Z transform. So Z transform is applicable to discrete time signals and discrete time systems, right? So Z transform is a powerful tool to analyze discrete time LTI system. Z transform is widely used in digital signal processing and in control systems. We use Laplace and Fourier transforms for the analysis of continuous time signals and systems. But Z transform is preferred for discrete time signals and systems. If you want to analyze continuous time signals and continuous time systems, then one can use Fourier transform and Laplace transform. For stability analysis, usually we prefer Laplace transform, while if you want to analyze frequency spectrum of any signal, then one can go for Fourier transform. But if you want to analyze discrete time signals and discrete time systems, then one can prefer Z transform, right? See, Z transform is a discrete time counterpart of Laplace transform. That is similar to how discrete time Fourier transform is related with Fourier transform. See, in this video itself, I will explain relation of discrete time Fourier transform with Z transform. And one should know Z transform that is a discrete time counterpart of Laplace transform. See Laplace transform and Fourier transform both are directly related with each other. In Laplace transform, we have S dou beam where S is equals to sigma plus J omega that is there with us. While in Fourier transform, we just have J omega sigma is equals to zero that is there with us. Right. So Fourier transform and Laplace transform that is directly related with each other. In this video, I will explain the relation of Z transform with discrete time Fourier transform. Right. First of all, let me explain the basic definition of Z transform. If you have signal X of N and if you want Z transform of X of N, then that is X of Z that is summation of n varies from minus infinite to plus infinite x of n into z to the power minus n. So using this definition of z transform, we can identify z transform x of z from x of n, right? So you need to remember this equation that is quite helpful in solving problems as well. In future coming videos, I'll be solving problems based on this equation. So x of z, that is z transform of discrete signal x of n, that is summation of n varies from minus infinite to plus infinite x of n z to the power minus n, right? Now, I will discuss about properties of Z transform. See proof of these properties that I will explain in next coming videos. In this video, I will just discuss about properties of Z transform. Proof of all these properties that I will explain in future coming videos with this video lecture series, right? See, first property that is based on linearity property. If you have two discrete signals, x1 of n and x2 of n, then z transform of these two signals that is x1 of z and x2 of z. As per linearity, if you have signal a1 x1 of n plus a2 x2 of n, then z transform will be a1 x1 of z plus a2 x2 of z. So one can say Z transform follows linearity property, right? See, second property is based on 
time shifting property. If you have signal x of n and z transform is x of z, then in time shifting property, here signal is having time shifting as per x of n minus k. Then z transform of the signal that will be z to the power minus k x of z. So here what we are doing is we are shifting this x of n as per x of n minus k because of this shifting minus k here in z transform you will have to multiply z to the power minus k right now i will discuss about third property that is based on scaling in z domain if you have signal x of n and z transform is x of z then here if you have signal a to the power n x of n then in z domain there will be scaling as per x of z divided by a so as if there is a scaling in z domain as per x of z divided by a then in signal domain a to the power n x of n that will be there with us right now i will discuss about next property that is based on differentiation in z domain if you have signal x of n that has z transform x of z then n into x of n z transform will be minus z into dxz by dz so if you have n multiplied by x of n then z domain will be minus z dxz by dz right now i will discuss about next property that is based on convolution of two signals if you have two signals x1 of n and x2 of n which is having z transform x1 of z and x2 of z then convolution of these two signal that will be multiplication in z domain right now i will discuss about initial value theorem if you want initial value of signal then that will be limit z tends to infinite x of z so here we have x of z that is z domain of x of n and to get initial value you need to calculate limit z tends to infinite x of z if you want final value then final value will be x of infinite that will be limit z tends to 1 z minus 1 x of z so using these two equations we can identify initial and final values of signal x of n right so these are the basics that one should know about properties of z transform now i will derive relation of z transform with discrete time Fourier transform to derive relationship in between z transform and discrete time Fourier transform first of all one should know what is z transform if you have signal x of n then z transform is x of z that is summation of n varies from minus infinite to plus infinite x of n into z to the power minus n and to have relationship of z transform with discrete time Fourier transform first of all one should know what is discrete time Fourier transform discrete time Fourier transform of x of n that is summation where n ranges from minus infinite to plus infinite x of n into e to the power minus j omega n now i will establish relationship in between z transform and discrete time Fourier transform first of all one should know what is the meaning of z see z is r into e to the power j omega right so z that is r into e to the power j omega and if you substitute the value of z in this equation of z transform then you will be getting x of z that is summation where n ranges from minus infinite to plus infinite x of n and instead of z now i'm placing r into e to the power j omega and to the power minus n that is there with us so here if you separate out r to the power minus n and e to the power minus j omega n then here we will be having x of n into r to the power minus n and here we have e to the power minus j omega n if you observe the definition of discrete time Fourier transform then here discrete time Fourier transform of x of n that is having e to the power minus j omega n in multiplication over here so if you want to represent this 
algebraic sum in form of discrete time Fourier transform, then you can say this is the signal that is therefore discrete time Fourier transform. So one can say x of z that is discrete time Fourier transform of this that is x of n into r to the power minus n. So that is what the basic relation which is there in between z transform and discrete time Fourier transform. Now I will derive equation of inverse z transform for which I will be considering this equation A and for this equation A I will take inverse discrete time Fourier transform. So here what I will do is I will take this equation A as a reference and for which I will calculate inverse discrete time Fourier transform. So if you take inverse discrete time Fourier transform then over this side this is getting cancelled and over this side we will be having inverse discrete time Fourier transform of x of z right. So you can observe over this side here we have inverse discrete time Fourier transform and over this side we have only x of n into r to the power minus n. If you take inverse discrete time Fourier transform of discrete time Fourier transform and then both are getting cancelled right. Now here I will simplify this. So what I'll do is I'll take this r to the power minus n over this side. So we'll be having x of n. So x of n is r to the power n inverse discrete time Fourier transform of x of z. Now I will explain you the basic definition of inverse discrete time Fourier transform. Inverse discrete time Fourier transform of x of z that is 1 divided by 2 pi integration of the signal into e to the power j omega and d omega. Right. Now what I'll do is I will take this r to the power n inside. So what will happen? Here along with e to the power j omega n we will be having r. So in total this will be r into e to the power j omega to the power n. Right. And what is r into e to the power j omega? That is z that I have earlier told. Right. So if it is z then this term that is z to the power n. Right. So what we need to do is we need to convert this integration in form of z domain. Right now this integration that is there in terms of omega domain. Now to convert this in terms of z domain I will be considering z is equals to this that is r into e to the power j omega. Now if you take differential of this then over this side we will be having dz and differential of this that will be r into e to the power j omega into j d omega right. So this is what differential term. Now with this differential term r into e to the power j omega that is z and this j is constant. So dz by j z that is equals to d omega that one can say right. Now if you substitute d omega that is equals to dz by j omega and if you substitute this r into e to the power j omega that is equals to z then in total over here we will be having z to the power n divided by z dz and over this side constant will be 1 by 2 pi j right. So you can observe here we have x of n that is 1 by 2 pi j that is this j and then we have x of z then this is z to the power n but here we have n minus 1. Why the reason is instead of d omega we have dz by z right. So this is the basic equation which is equation of inverse z transform but usually we don't use this equation of inverse z transform. There are some standard methods that even I will be explaining you in future coming videos where I will solve few interesting examples. We don't use this equation of inverse z transform. That's why I'm not giving that much importance to this. But to derive equation of inverse z transform, I have specifically made this video. Now let me discuss about applications of z transform. Z transform is widely used with discrete time signals and discrete time systems. Here I'll be discussing about few applications only. Like Z transform that is used in digital signal processing where we analyze and design digital filters using Z transform. Z transform is also used in control systems where we 
एनालाइज एंड स्टडी डिस्क्रीट टाइम कंट्रोल सिस्टम बिहेवियर जेट ट्रांसफॉर्म इज ऑल्सो यूज इन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेश ऑफ डिस्क्रीट टाइम सिस्टम जेट ट्रांसफॉर्म इज ऑल्सो यूज टू एनालाइज स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ सिस्टम यूजिंग आर ओ सी इन फ्यूचर कमिंग वीडियोज आई विल ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द सिस्टम यूजिंग रीजियन ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस सो दीज आर द एप्लीकेशन दैट आई हैव लिस्टेड बट देर आर मेनी अदर एप्लीकेशन दैट इज देर विद जेट ट्रांसफॉर्म आई होप यू हैव एंजॉयड दिस सेशन स्टिल इफ यू हैव एनी कन्फ्यूजन जस्ट प्लेस दैट इन कमेंट सेक्शन आई बी हैप्पी टू हेल्प यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो